time that we've been through even COVID has the COVID time has um, shown us that we need to be more resilient and I really thank God for Naresh and Matthew <clears throat> and the reason we put this on was the fact that we've been able to get through the COVID time without uh, without struggling we've actually thrived through this time from an economic point of view from a church point of view as well absolutely seeing being able to serve more people just by changing strategies <clears throat> and that's all from what God has shown and we want to just encourage you that it's possible for anyone because it's what God has uh, guided us in, it's in His Word, if we're willing to look at that. Um, one of our other implementers who join, who are with us, had a few when we went into the COVID period, God just really spoke to him about it being a time of reset. Can I encourage you that a lot of people uh, went into 2020 believing that it was a time of 2020 vision, and they were expecting these breakthroughs, and it is a time of 2020 vision, and it's refocusing back from heaven's point of view. We're never going to go back to normal but there's a new normal and and if you resist it it's still going to come but if you embrace it heaven's way it begins to change things and and we're sitting here not talking theory here today but a lot of practical understanding that we've been able to thrive through this time even in our relationships in our health nothing has been affected through this time but it has been a big wake-up call for the world can the world come to a standstill absolutely it did what do we do about it so 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosperous. Um, that's a great scripture everyone knows, but uh, it's interesting it says uh, that John says, I, I wish you prosper. And the word prosper there is not just spiritual prosperity, it is financial prosperity as well. But it's the level of your soul, not your spirit, which is your mind. So question to you is, do you have weak thinking or do you have wealth thinking? Do you have weak thinking or wealth thinking? There's a book that I've recently put out. That's my third book that the Lord just got me to steward well. It's called Better Than the Tides. And one of the things we say here is in Genesis 26, I really get excited about this, that um, you know, Narish, when I was a kid, told me, when I was a teenager in, in, in uh, university, <clears throat> he was in Australia with me growing up and he was in university uh, with me doing his uh, second degree. And uh, I asked him about the tides and he said, it is, uh, God's got a better plan than the tides. And, and it comes from this covenant that Abraham made with, with uh, uh, that God made with Abraham. But God said, I'll swear by myself. God made many covenants, but this covenant, he said, I'll swear by myself. And it's something that we all have access to because Jesus said we are children of Abraham through faith. So God comes to Isaac uh, in Genesis 26 verse 1 and, and it says there was a drought in the land. And this is the broke stage that Isaac was in. And says, I'll be with you and I will bless you because of your father Abraham. And those are two really important statements I want to encourage you with. A lot of us think that if we don't do something for God, he can't bless us. That was under the law, and Hebrew says we are under a better covenant with better promises, which is that you are already blessed through faith in Jesus and the efforts Jesus made on the cross. Now will you go do? So obedience comes from after the belief that we have been blessed through the works of Christ. And so God says to uh, Isaac, I'm going to be with you and bless you. And then Isaac goes and sows in the land of drought and produces a hundredfold. Then it says something really interesting in verses 12 and 13. He began to prosper, continued to prosper, and became very prosperous. And I want to encourage you that it is time for us as believers to start doing that. I retired at the age of 36 into what we call economic independence. Uh, my wife and I travel around the world. We get to preach the gospel. We don't ask anyone for help financially for our personal needs. <clears throat> We've learned to uh, uh, walk by faith, but also produce income wherever we go and go to nations and be a blessing to churches rather than receiving. Um, we, when, when we retired into this sort of lifestyle, it was around Deuteronomy 8.18 that God has given us the power to create wealth. I'm really excited about the idea that I can produce income through other ways apart from myself, which frees me up to do what God has called me to do. And that's really exciting. And I want to encourage you that it's possible as well uh, for you to do the same. Why? Because it is not based on my efforts. It's based on what God's promised. Amen. And so I want you to think about 
are you in what stage are you in because when you go from broke to breakthrough you want fina- permanent financial breakthroughs moving into the flow stage where you have more than enough for your lifestyle and it's interesting i figured out that everywhere i've traveled around the world between 100 to 200000 dollars is all anyone needs to live off a very comfortable life once all your debts are cleared 100 to 200000 dollars a year that's generally the effect some need a little bit more some need a little bit less now imagine you could achieve that and i'll show you through these 20 minutes how you how i've been able to do that and uh, do it over and over again without me flow i have enough financial flow without my personal input to live comfortably so without personal input now that's a bit of a te- task if you're a career oriented person but it is possible to do and then move into overflow stage which is giving away 80 to 90 percent rather than 10 percent of our income and still living on what is more than enough for ourselves how exciting would that be to be able to change the way the economies of this world work through the principles of heaven. So here's a question, can my income produce without me? Question I asked myself over 20 years ago and I've been able to produce income that run and, and businesses that, that can eventually run without me. I can choose to go to work on, on a Monday if I want to. I can choose to take time off, but income keeps coming. And I really thank God for people like Narish and Matthew who've taught me how to pay down debts, one way of increasing profits, how to invest, get better returns, money producing for itself rather than me being a slave to it. The idea is that you have kingdom, and I call it business in the kingdom and for the kingdom. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a little while. Just during COVID time, here are some of the things that we saw still happening as returns. Uh, Matthew is in, in similar things to me on investments. He introduced me to this. <clears throat> excuse me, around the 23rd of March, we had returns on some of our investments where we were getting, we got a 3.34% return. Multiply that five times and, uh, sorry, uh, 10 times uh, for the year. This is one five-week cycle and that's about a 33% return um, that we were getting on our investment. The Bible says at least get interest back. We went to get multiplications and I'll talk about that soon. In April, Again, think of COVID time. We were um, getting returns on, on different trades. And, and this is investments. This was amazing, shocking. DS, 6.91%. Multiply that 10 times and you've, um, you've got a 69% return on your investments. Are they considered high risk? Yes, you could lose all your money, but we consider it low risk in a high risk category because we don't gamble. I've got nine children, I'm a father of nine, and I have a lot of responsibilities, so I'm not a gambler. Uh, Matthew is retired, retired as he says, I'm told off if I say he's retired, Um, and so he's not ready to to take unnecessary risks on his money. And and Naresh I've known for, for decades, and I know that he's not a gambler either. So we're talking about stuff that's real and relevant. Just the 11th of May last month, we did a, a another great performance. These are just to show you that these are real things. <clears throat> uh, a trade here on silver uh, just a few weeks ago closed off and made $1.2 million. Now, when people say everything's going down and crashing, it's actually not true. It just depends on where you're at. And God's given us the wisdom to do these things. I want to very quickly go through, is there a biblical reference to this? Because I know some of you here are ministers online. Others of you have been called by God to be kings in, in the in the workforce uh, the three of us are actually kings and priests we our first foremost job is to preach the gospel of the kingdom that is our foremost thing but there's been a money distraction for many years and so we realized that we had to sort out the money distractions in our life um, one of the things i remember telling my mom when i was growing up was i want to be a missionary and and she was really happy about that and then i said i want to be a millionaire as well uh, today it's a billionaire because millionaires aren't worth much with all the inflation and mom nearly had a heart attack Um, she says you can't be both Um, thank god she's changed her mind since then and i thank god for nourish mentoring me through those times to say it is possible to be both because god wants us to be he wants us to handle money well not to be a slave to it but needed to run away from it because it's the love of money that's the root of all evil not money itself so we don't ask people for money for our ministry personally People want to contribute to the work that we do, great, 100% goes out to them. And that's exciting. Uh, we're not under the Levitical priesthood as, as pastors. <clears throat> we're under the Melchizedek 
priesthood, which is really exciting. I call it the Mel Melchizedek touch, better than the Midas touch. It's a guaranteed thing. So here's some seven reasons biblically why it is your royal rights and responsibilities to create wealth. And I want you to just kind of, as you listen to this, look at what stands out and jumps out at you and let that the Holy Spirit minister to you on this. It's your God-given rights and responsibilities to create wealth. Deuteronomy 8.18. Matthew spoke about this earlier. Number two, it is your God-given rights and responsibilities to live debt-free. Romans 13.8. I've seen God get me out of over $200,000 of debt just by understanding this scripture and this word and applying it. And it's beyond just declarations. It's, it's belief. It's changing your belief to believe on the word of God, not what the world says. <clears throat> it is your God-given right and responsibility to not be poor. Really important, Deuteronomy 15, 4, there will be no poor among you. People say, but Jesus said there'll always be the poor with you. Jesus spoke about everyone in the world, but he says when you are part of the family of God, you can come in poor, but you don't remain poor. And I will stand by that no matter what. I always challenge people, no matter what country we go to. I was born in Africa. I was brought up in, in Australia. My parents come from Sri Lanka, so that's why I said, like, my brother Don, I'm a bit of a messed up kid, but I, I'm a citizen of heaven and an ambassador to this earth. And understanding from that perspective, whatever country we go to, including Sri Lanka and India and Africa, we apply these same principles and we're seeing results, which is really exciting. My wife is from Kenya, and uh, I thank God for the ability to understand these. Number four, it is your God-given rights and responsibilities to lend and not borrow. Deuteronomy 15.6. That's very exciting. Because a lot of us are caught up in the debt cycles. And that holds us back from doing what God's called us to do. As Naresh was sharing about debt reduction, one of the ways is the biggest, one of the biggest debts people have is caught into a mortgage. And a system that God has never created as the best system in the first place. So how do you work around that? Number five. It is your God-given right and responsibility to be a good steward of money. Not a good servant, but a good steward of money. We're sons of God, Galatians 4, 7 says, that have been given an inheritance, but we're being asked to steward money well. And I want to stop on this for a minute because it's really important for you to understand the context of it. Here's the lesson, Luke 16, 9a. Use worldly resources to benefit others and make friends. If you are faithful in the little things, you'll be faithful in the large. But if you're dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, money, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? So as uh, Matthew said, this is a time of testing our character. Creating wealth and being able to steward it well is a time of testing your character. It's not a time of you to run away from it. Were you destined for a time like this? Yeah, I believe God's raising up the Queen Esther of the bride that it's time to steward well, like Proverbs 31. We are the bride. Number six, it is your God-given rights and responsibilities to help the widow, orphans, fatherless, and the needy. James 1.27, you can't give away what you don't have. If you don't have, you can't give. You might have a great heart to want to help, but you can't if you don't have. Imagine moving towards a place where you could give away 50%, 60%, 80%, 90% of your income, and living on the rest was more than enough for you. That's less selfish than just saying, God, just give me enough for myself and my family. That's one of the most selfish prayers that we could ever pray. I want to challenge you to think through and let the Holy Spirit speak with you today from the Scriptures. I'm a big believer of letting the Word speak to us in God's opinion, not our opinion of God. Number seven, it is your God-given rights and responsibilities to be time-free, resourced, and available to fulfill the Great Commission. Most people struggle at this one and say they really want to see that happen in their lives. I want to encourage you that I've been able to achieve that. Not by anything I've done wrong. I, uh, right. I've messed up my life. I went through a lot of tough times. But I thank God that the Word of God still applies. And believing on His Word elevates us back to where God wants us to be. And makes us responsible sons. Being able to take over the family business. When I say sons, it means men and women. Just like when I say the bride, it includes the men. Amen. And it's time for us to do that. So here's my question to you. What's one of these things that are challenging you today that you're saying, mm, I don't know if um, 
I, I'm challenged by this and I want to, I want God to show me how I can take the next step on this. And if one thing or two things are challenging, I'd like you to write that in the chat box right now. Which number is, is challenging you out of these seven? Uh, one or two things that you might go, yeah, I just want to, I, I really want to see myself not be in debt anymore. It could be that. Or I want to be able to give more to the poor. I want to um, be more responsible to steward money better. Would you uh, type that number into the chat? Um, I know sometimes if we try to say all seven are great, uh, we do nothing. But if we take one and try to do one, that's a great, that, that's a better step than doing nothing. Yeah, thank you, Narish. Working on number seven, Don, number six. Uh, to be a good steward of money, JD, thank you. Number two and seven, Jason, seven, Jillian, thank you. John and Jillian, seven. Uh, four and four, yeah. It, it's great. Thank you guys for, for responding to this because that's just allowing the Holy Spirit to talk through the situation here. This is not just another seminar for us. For us, we, we want Holy Spirit to really guide us on these things because we don't want to be in, in error. But at the same time, when we know the truth, we want to walk in the truth. And, and truth is important. So, go back to that same question. Can my income produce without me? Maybe you've never heard that question. Most people I speak to have never heard that question because they're just used to thinking, oh, money works. You know, money can only come if I work. But the Bible clearly tells me, as I've studied the Bible for decades, I used to love reading books. I'd read about two to three books a week at the same time. People say that only women can multitask, but uh, I can multitask better than a woman, and I've had women agree with me. So um, I'm happy to take on the, 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 the challenge anytime. But I was reading multiple books at the same time because I love reading and love information. And I remember some years ago that, that my bookshelf fell down. I had to fast from books because I could not walk past a bookshop shop without buying a book. Um, and and um, I remember that my bookshelf falling down in my office over a decade ago and I ran over to it and thank God no one was hurt. My, I had little kids r around the house as well and I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, get back to the Bible. I will teach you everything you need to know about business, relationships, um, about anything you need in life from the Word. And I did and it's one of the best uh, decisions I ever made. So I spent the next five years just reading the Word, nothing else. Can my income produce without me? I want you to think about that. I want to share with you in my journey, here are my nine wealth steps that I have taken and maybe something of this would, uh, would speak out to you and speak to you in this. Number one, change your mind towards wealth. Number two, start with faith if you have nothing. People say they have nothing. I'll show you in a few minutes how I set up business without, without income, without any income, without any capital. No excuses. Number three, create a plan to produce income without capital. I'm going to show you how to, how to do that today. Hopefully it'll help you. I've done over seven businesses like that and, and it's freed me up to do the things God's called me to do. I'm 44 this year and I got into economic independence at the age of 36 and it's really helped me not wait till I'm retired to do stuff. Number four, use your capital to invest into a mentor. If you've got, a cap, if you've got capital, Spend it on a mentor, not on businesses that you're not sure of because chances are you're taking a much higher risk. Number five, make money, produce money by investing a portion of your savings, a portion, not all, in high-risk categories that are low risk. What I showed you before was not all my savings, but a portion of it. I say make money, have babies. I always like to say that. If you haven't read the book, read the book uh, by George Carlson, The Richest Man in Babylon. Small book that's been a really big effect on me. And Rich Dad, Poor Dad was another really great one that decades ago I read. And um, Naresh alluded to that on Robert Kiyosaki. Number six, buy positive cash flow properties. Properties that give you back money. Put money in your pocket, not take it away. Otherwise, it's not an asset. Make your own house pay for its own mortgage. I've learned to do that. That's really exciting. Again, with Naresh and Matthew and a couple of others helping me with strategies. Number eight, these are my nine wealth steps that I've taken over the last... 15 years, even when things just went pear-shaped in my life from decisions and circumstances beyond me sometimes, uh, at that time, I was able to look at these steps and come back up. Number eight, give, 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 so, so, so. Very important. 
you can't grow what you don't sow and whatever you are sowing right now is obviously growing and it could be a negative thing number nine move into wealth creation that produces double five ten thirty sixty a hundred fold this really excites me the fact that i don't produce returns on investments of percentages anymore i choose to have double five times ten times minimum on any investment i make and more and if i can set up business without capital like i'll show you in a few minutes then that is an um, exponential return on investment because it didn't cost me anything to set it up build with the mind to give away 80 to 90 percent of your income and live on 10 to 20, 10 to 20 percent which would be more than enough for you if anyone would agree with that that they are ready to build and this is not going to take you decades usually about two to five years because you need to change your mind transform it but you don't wait two to five years for this to happen but within the next two to five years is a journey of transformation going back to the way god is intended if this talks to anyone right now and you're going yep i i could do this towards building where i can give away more than i keep would you put a one in the uh, in the chat because i want to know i'm talking to the right people here that the holy spirit can just you know really just speak to you in this time that we have together yeah thanks for a couple of people putting putting that in and again, this is not theory, guys. This is practical. Um, we, we'll be finishing off in about 15 minutes, and then we'll stay on for a little longer for those who want to, uh, who would like to chat more about it. Will be uh, the, the presenters will be on for just another half an hour or so, um, because I want you to, if you don't know us, to ask questions and see credibility in this as well, because we're serious about this stuff. God said it's time, and we we've tested all of this out. It's working. We're not all fully there yet, but it's working. Why are we so keen on money? Well, money is not a important factor. It's this. The value of a soul that none should perish. That's my, that's my heartbeat. That's Narish's heartbeat, Matthew's heartbeat. And I know some of you, it's your heartbeat. Here's a, uh, just early last year, late last year, I went, was invited to Sydney, Australia to do a conference, a leadership conference with some Christian leaders. We had over 500 people in there. Um, and uh, this is the night before uh, I was, I'd flown over with two of my kids and uh, we were having dinner together and we met this beautiful girl called Wendy, um, who we thought was one of the presenters or leaders in their group or organizers um, and, and thought she was one of the, be one, a believer as well. We quickly found out that she was uh, there because of the venue. She was looking after the venue and she had a different faith to us, came from a Buddhist background. Now it's interesting. I, I'm I'm not a uh, I'm a big evangelist, but I'm not a big on condemning people on how bad their God is or how the big their bad their beliefs are. And it was interesting on the table that there were others around me who started, uh, in my words and my observation, chipping into her, telling her how bad Buddha was and and how good Jesus is. I tell you what, it doesn't work. We've seen thousands coming to the Lord through doing what Jesus taught us to do. So I just got to speaking with her. She didn't look as bright as she looks right now. Um, she was going through some tough times. And um, so I just said to her, she, she, she kept talk, engaging with me above all everyone else um, on the table during dinner time. And she said, you've got a real uh, energy around you. That's the word she used. And then, so I used her language like Jesus did with the woman at the well. And I said, um, well, would you like me to release some of that energy to you? Because I know the best energy that's in the room ever. And she goes, yes, please. So I said, give me your hand. And I took her hand. And within 20 minutes, she was feeling so much better. Now, I know what I was doing. I was releasing Holy Spirit presence into her. But I couldn't be religious about it because she, didn't, she wouldn't have understood. By the end of the conversation, she gave her heart to Jesus. And her face changed from what it was before to now. These are one of my students, Michelle, who I, I mentor. And she was with me in Sydney. And she's a witness to what happened. The next day... I meant to be presenting in there. I did my presentation, came out, and then uh, Wendy in, in introduces me to this lovely lady whose name I can't pronounce. Um, and uh, she's from Tehran, came over as a refugee to Australia and went through a really tough time. Muslim background. These are my two children. This is Ezra and, and, uh, and, um, and Esther. Um, and I've got nine, as I said. And this is the younger boy. He's, he was 12 then, um, and she was 13. And so they move in the prophetic with me as well. And we got to speaking to this girl for an hour. And uh, value of a soul. We weren't interested in making money. We make money so we can be free to do these things. And within an hour and a half, 
she was overwhelmed that we would spend so much time with her and she gave her heart to Jesus. And we follow up with them and check on them regularly. Uh, this is a couple of years ago in the city. And I'm showing you why we create wealth. So this might understand that we're freeing up our time and taking away distractions. We, this is our team that went to the city. Uh, Matthew was with us. Um, we saw over 242 people give their hearts to Jesus on New Year's Eve. Clean heart, clean start. It was just amazing that so many people are willing and open. We were told that Australia isn't because it's no longer considered a Christian nation. I want to encourage you in your nation, don't believe what the church is saying. Uh, as pastors, we, we uh, apologize that we told you you'll be persecuted. The only persecutions we get are from within the church. People out there really want Jesus. They don't want religion, but they want Jesus. And uh, it's just been such an amazing thing to see God do that. Uh, for those in Canada, Nadine, this is how I got to meet you, which is such an excitement. I came over to Canada because my uncle, who um, was my dad's best friend growing up, dad's going to be with the Lord, <clears throat> was his daughter called us and said, and I hadn't met him for over 30 years, since he left Nigeria. We grew up in Nigeria together. We came over to Australia. He went over to Canada, told that he was dying. He had only had a few weeks to live, this is a few years ago. And so I booked a ticket, value for soul that none should perish, booked a ticket, took me 24 hours plus to travel around the world, as we say, to Canada, and uh, met my uncle. Had to convince him that I was still Reuben because he'd only seen me as a kid, and he was wondering why I had so much facial hair. But anyway, that's another story for another time. Um, first day, he was a staunch Hindu, refused Jesus all his life, literally will, would throw you out of his house. And Narish knows with his father at the age of, I think, close to 90, who was a staunch Hindu, but in, in the end, the angels came into his room and he gave his heart to Jesus. And there, I was there to witness that and it was amazing. But this is Uncle Bala and um, I spoke with him and, and I prayed with him. And then the next day I came back and spoke with him. And the third day when I came back, he gave his heart to the Lord. I took another picture. I didn't realize the difference until I put them together. Can you see the difference of what Jesus makes to our lives? Same camera I, I use, same lighting in the room. Um, I have not doctored this. And this wrecks me often when, when I say, Lord, thank you for the opportunities, for the value of one soul. He didn't die. He's still alive, going so well. Every time I go to Canada, I get to see him. And he's going to church now and he's learning to grow even in the uh, aged care facility that he's in. This is in Kenya, prisoners, uh, the women's prison that we went to, a team of us went to. And uh, right now we have a, a need that we're meeting uh, of, of sanitary pads for five women's prisons in Kenya. They're in dire straits. They have 65 children in these prisons and we know the one in charge of the prisons, this lady here, Judith, her husband is in charge of the prisons. God has given us favor, they're ministers as well. And I'm just going to play a little video clip on this is when we were there last year and we got to give them blankets and, and soap and toiletries. And this is how grateful they were to us. What a blessing. Bridger, I don't know if you remember that time. That was uh, such a blessing in, in seeing what God is doing. This is just the value of the soul. So, um, as I've said, these are my nine wealth steps. Oops, sorry. And out of that, I have three things that I do right now. This is my, this is my goal for wealth. I get up every morning and I look at working full-time on my investments, and I do it with a strategy. And the first thing is make money from nothing. The second strategy is make money, make money. Let them have children. And the third strategy is make investments multiply. And so I want to just share with you the first one on how I make money from nothing. How do you create a business with little or no capital in five highly effective steps that keeps on multiplying? And we have no excuse because it's possible to do. Isaac took what was in his hand, sowed, and it became a hundredfold. During the time of what? Drought. So imagine even in these economic times, you can thrive if you do it God's way. Business is meant to multiply. So here's five steps that I use all the time over the decades, and I've set up over seven businesses this way, taught others around the world to do the same thing. And geographic location, educational status, nothing 
uh, comes in the way of God's design. And I learned this all from the word. Number f the five steps are choose your product or service, discover your niche area and perfect customer through research. And you're welcome to take a picture of this. Add value to make your product service stand out from the competition. Understand that marketing is education. <clears throat> Excuse me, when done effectively from the heart, sales, it'll just happen. Sales is not hard. Create a customer for life through relational customer service. These five steps is basically, the, in a nutshell, what you, how you can create business with no capital. Here's some examples. I created this, a business called Student Care Australia. At that time, I had three children, just lost my job. Um, I had a very lucrative job earning over $120,000 to $150,000 a year. Uh, lost the job, and uh, I, this was back in 2000. Um, got an idea from the Lord, started with that capital, a student business, student accommodation business, had about 15 properties. And I started with generating $200 profit on the first house and then over time set up seven other houses in the first 10 months, eventually had 15 properties at any one time, generating thirty dollars to $40,000 a month, not a year, a month. So this is possible. <clears throat> set up another business called Future Tech Business Solutions where I used my career training. I was a poor programmer, but good at analysis of people's needs. I'm a real people person. So I wasn't happy with programming. I was a robotics engineer, um, but I'm not a big fan of uh, sitting in front of a computer for, 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 for long periods of time talking to, to, a, um, to a computer. I'd rather talk through a computer to people like you. And so I created what is called a bridge connector model and had two major clients, had uh, developed software that lasted 10 years and every year I'd make thousands of dollars just on support fees coming through. Are they good ideas? Absolutely. God will give you an idea. Why, why do I share testimony? Because Revelation says that we overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And I want to overcome that in your life too. That if you're going through financial needs and crisis that you're able to overcome. So here are the five steps again. <clears throat> and you can see them on the left. Here's some other testimonies of some of my students that I've helped and people to transform. Ryan was an ex-kickboxing Victorian champion. He came with us to Kenya last year, one of his dreams to do that. Uh, he was broke when I met him in 2014. Helped him with an idea to co do concreting, started without capital. Within six months, he was out of debt. Within 12 months, he had $10,000 surplus and he didn't know what to do. We're just moving him now to a new business of uh, being a business coach. And it's quite exciting to see him take this and again start without capital. One closer to home, my sister, uh, my blood sister, microbiologist, a mom and a missionary. She converted a hobby into a cake business. Um, last year she took the business international, which was really exciting. This year she's doubled her income within six months. Actually this was 2019, so I beg your pardon. Two years ago took it international. Last year, doubled the income and now moving towards creating $100,000 a year. During the COVID time, she moved everything online, learned the way I've taught her to do these things without extra capital, doesn't spend a lot of money on advertising, makes, uh, keeps, retains most, if not all, her profits. If you're a minister and you think you can't do this, well, here's an Anglican minister, one of our mentors uh, and implementers with Matthew and myself and Papa Luke in Australia. Um, don't hold it against him being an Anglican priest. He's uh, so flamboyant. He's amazing. When we first met him, he, he was just living on wages and didn't know if he could go any further than that, <clears throat> living off the church wages. Since then, he's, uh, been, he's handcrafted these crosses that he's been doing for decades, made into a business. He's uh, developed, just uh, launched his new book, I'm a Son of God, doing some programs with him. He's bought property. He's... Uh, He's seeing him, that he could actually run solo on this uh, without needing the, the money from the priesthood. How exciting is that? Because God's calling for bigger things. So here are the five steps. Choose your product service. Discover your niche area and perfect customer through research. So what sort of product or service can you choose? Well, most people have the ability within them to either take a, a hobby and monetize it, take their skills and monetize it, um, find a problem and solve it or look at the treasure within them and start coaching others and transforming others. 
Do you know that there were 7.4 billion people in the world? So we've got a niche. And through research, you can niche to find the right people that you need. And you're not forcing people to trade money with you. You're actually encouraging people who really need to trade money for a product or service. You're just telling them that you're out there and it's not as hard as you think. Adding value sets you beyond the competition. Don't have time today to talk through more detail of this, but there is an opportunity. If you guys would like to join us on some more training, we'll let you know after for those who are interested. And marketing and sales, I'm, a, I'm, 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 I'm the best at this. I set myself up to be the best in learning this because Jesus actually is one of the best marketers, is the best marketer in the world because marketing is education. And when you learn from that point of view, give people opportunities for sales. Sales is an opportunity. So just some questions before I finish off right now. Are you ready to use the business wheel of success on your wealth creation? In order of priority, what are these five steps? Maybe you've heard of some of these steps. Maybe you haven't. Maybe this is all new to you, but is there a step you can start with? Because it's great showing you all these steps, but what do you start with? Have you got a current testimony? Sometimes you need to tell people about your testimony. It makes a difference. And are you willing to work on this to form another source of income that's beyond just your 